in First Timothy, second chapter, starting at verse eight, it says, "I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, without wrath and doubting." In like manner that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broadened hair or gold or pearl or costly array, but which become women, women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach or usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence, for Adam was first formed in Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. This is the silence of the women, part two. Now, I have read to you First Timothy two, starting at verse eight to verse fifteen. It starts out talking about men lifting up holy hands. When they pray. Then he talks about women adorning themselves in modest apparel. Then in verse 11, he says, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Then he says, I suffer not the woman to teach our usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed in Eve. Then it says Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. Then it says, talks about childbearing. Now what is this talking about? Is it saying that women cannot speak in an assembly? Well, it seems like it. But is it really saying that? In my first video, Silence of the Women, I talked about Corinthians. And I told you that it was talked about the prophet's wives. And they talked about the law. And they talked about women being silent and being in subjection. Now whether you realize it or not, there are four authorities over the woman. Four authorities. And those authorities is number one, the word of God, scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, First uh, Second Timothy three sixteen. The next authority is the father's authority over his daughter. Amen. Exodus twenty twelve talks about the children respecting the parents. That's even the father. In uh, Exodus twenty twelve and Colossians three twenty says children. It is your Christian duty to obey your parents. Colossians 3.20 Exodus 20.12 20, Colossians 3.20 Now the next authority is the authority of the husband over the wife. And that is Genesis 3.16 And God told Eve and unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and in thy deception and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. King James Version. The Good News Bible says, And he said unto the woman, I will increase your troubles in pregnancy and your pain in giving birth. In spite of this, you will still have desire for your husband, yet you will be subject to him. Then you have the last authority called civil authority, which is found in Romans 13, starting at verse 1 to verse 7. So there are three, are there actually four authorities? Authority of the Word of God, number one. Authority of the father over the daughter. The authority over the, the husband, over the wife. And the authority of government over the woman, just like it's over the man. There is no authority, people, of men over women. I'm going to say that again. There is no authority 
of men over women. Because whether you realize or not, when you read these verses, and they talk about, I suffer, First Timothy 2.12, but I suffer not the woman to teach all usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence for Adam was first formed, then Eve. It's talking about a husband and wife situation. Now you would think it's talking about a male and female situation. It really isn't. Because when you go, when I took you back, remember, we talked about the wife. If you want to learn anything, let her go ask her husband. But she is commanded to be under obedience as also said the law. What law? The only law of authority over the woman is the husband over the wife. And it's only found in Genesis 3.16. God told Eve, your desire should be towards your husband and he shall rule over thee. He did not say, Eve, the man shall rule over you. He didn't say that. God says, your desire to be towards your husband, and your husband shall rule over you. It did not say, men shall rule over women. Not only that, I have to take you back to collect, I mean, uh, Corinthians, because it says, if a woman want to learn anything, let her ask her husband. You got to be kidding me. You actually think that women going to ask these men today about the Bible? Most of them don't even go to church and are, uh, they haven't the slightest clue about what's in the Bible. Most of them can't even find John 3.16. But they go, ask their husbands. Ask their husband what? Now if he's a Christian and he loved the Lord and he's a student of the word, yes. But there are a whole lot of men go to church and still haven't the slightest clue what's in the Bible. What is he going to learn from him? See, there's a lot that we need to deal with, people. But we're dealing with the authority of the husband over the wife. There is nowhere in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy about men having authority over women. I don't have authority over my neighbor's wife. He would think I'm crazy. The only authority I have is over my wife as well as my daughter. My daughter is gone. She's on her own. She has a job. But she's still my daughter. She respects my opinion. I'm a father. But the only authority that I have is really over my wife. Because God says so. And sometimes my wife can test that. We, we might have an argument sometimes. And I tell my wife, I said, the word of God says that I'm the head. And my wife said, I'm the neck that turns the head. <laughs> but it's talking about the wife usurping authority over the husband or embarrassing the husband. A good example, one example is that I was pastoring a church. Well, I'm sorry, I was an elder at a church many years ago, ministering. And I was getting on some men's case regarding the, how to treat the wives. And the, one sister in the church was saying, amen, Brother Glover. Amen. It's out loud. Nobody else was saying anything. But when I got on a woman, he didn't say amen. He didn't holler out amen. But every time I preached on the men, this one sister in the church hollered out amen, Brother Glover. So it was obvious what she was doing. So I had to pull her aside and say, Sister, you need to be quiet. You are embarrassing your husband. You are putting him to shame. You need to be silent. Because when I talk about the women, he don't holler out amen. She's the only one in the church hollering out amen. In other words, he said, that's right, get on this case, brother lover. Talk about it. Straighten him out. She was usurping authority. She was embarrassing her husband. Can't we just all get along? The body of Christ should have respect for one another. The husband should respect the wife like the wife should respect the husband. The children should respect their parents. But it's talking about the authority of the husband over the wife. Not men over women. Because it's talking about she should be saved in childbearing. And that word silence is talking about quietness. Being quiet. 
You, you see the same thing in 1 Corinthians 14 chapter regarding the man that speaks in tongues. If there is no interpreter, it is said that he should be quiet and speak to himself and to God. I haven't even dealt with the women preachers yet. That's another subject. But there are only four authorities over the female. The word of God, the father over the daughter, the husband over the wife, and silver government over her, just like over men. God bless you. I will continue this discussion later. Amen.